from Vadizi Customer Care here. At, I'm here to show you a little more of the Microsoft Surface. Last time you saw us do an unboxing video for this. Now we have got a couple of requests, a couple of comments, things they liked, didn't like. One of the big ones we saw was actually for the mail program. Now for the mail program, the main reason why we're showing you this is a couple different reasons. One of them is that uh, .easy of course offers mail to all of our clients. But the main thing was also that a lot of people said they couldn't find one of these or any walkthroughs for this. Which is why we thought, hey, we're going to help you out and we're going to show this. That's why we're here today. So we're again back here with the Microsoft Surface. We're going to be walking you through how to set up an IMAP account, which a lot of people like, especially for business-wise. And for those of you who are on tablet device, generally a little more preferable to pop, because that way everything is synchronized with any other computer, phone, any other device you've got, which is great. And we do offer IMAP, so it is there if you want it. So we're going to be showing you how to set this up now. So for this one here, we've already got it set up to the basic UI for the RT. Those of you who, again, have a Surface familiar with this or getting still used to it, we know ourselves here, we're still getting a little bit used to it. Now, for the way we set this up, we do have the mail icon right here, so it is easy to find. It is going to look fairly similar unless you've changed your color scheme, but it's still the same icon. So you just want to click on this to start out here. It's going to take a little bit to load up. It does need to synchronize and connect and do all this lovely goodness here. Now, just while we are waiting for this to load up, we're going to warn you ahead of time. Now, we've already set up an account list before, so it's going to look a little different than those of you who've come here for the first time. Now, notably, if you come in here for your second time, you're going to get these options down the side here. If you're coming for the first time, you're actually going to get something across the middle here, which is going to ask you whether you want to set up IMAP, POP, or Exchange. Now, we found a little bug with this the first time we went through, which was kind of funny, actually, when we looked at it. If you select POP, IMAP, or Exchange Server, it doesn't actually deselect the radio button, letting you select multiple ones. When we tried that, it actually crashed and brought us back to the UI. Then when we came in here, it brought us back to this screen. So for those of you who get that experience, you may get this. You can always just click the Windows button, go to the main screen, come back, and you'll get right back here. Or you can go through and set up the account. It's your real choice. There's no harm with doing either. Now for this one here, you're going to see, of course, because it is a Surface, it's going to show you Hotmail first, Outlook second. It's also got Google and AOL, surprisingly enough. To be honest, I thought they would have put something else in there, but not to worry, anything else. Now if you're setting up any other type of account, like we are here, or for your domain or anything, you're going to want to go to this one in the bottom left corner, View All in Settings. Now you're going to see this show up on the other side instead. It's going to show the same settings except for a major other one we're seeing, which is other accounts. Any of you who are setting up any email for your domains, this is the one you want to go in and go to. So we're going to click on that here. Now, one of the other fun bugs we found here is where it asks for email address and password, it doesn't seem to like just entering those two. So you do need to make sure you click on where it says show more details right here. It is very, very important because otherwise it can crash and go back to the main screen which of course we saw, and I'm having trouble clicking this apparently. <sighs> there we go. Alrighty, so as you can see, there's still a little fun with the mail program, which we're going to hope they're going to work out fairly similar. And as you can see here, you may need to take a couple clicks yourself. For this year, we've already set up a sample email address, so we're just going to be setting that up here to show you what it's like. So. As you can see, I'm still getting a little used to the keyboard here, as I'm sure most of you are finding. So not to worry here. feels like I'm starting all over again, having to look at the keyboard. And as you can see, it's still a little mix of the keyboard and the touchscreen. You could hook in a mouse to get around that. Personally, I find I like the touchscreen more than the trackpad. You're maybe the same way, maybe not. But that's mainly the way I'm going to be doing it, is touchpad versus keyboard. Now, the email address for those of you who are at .easy are going to be using the exact same thing here, except instead of this at symbol, which we just typed in, you're going to need to use a plus symbol for IMAP, because that's the way the servers like it. If you use the at symbol, you may get away with it, but most of the servers in the network settings, including your router settings, are going to be a little more picky and be looking for that plus symbol. So do make sure you put it in there. Otherwise, it's going to be exactly the same as your email address. Now I want to put in the password. Now do remember that you want to keep your password secure. So that's why we're just using a demo here. Make sure you do keep it in there. Now you can choose to remember, you can choose not to. That's up to you. It's actually set to remember everything by default. It's not a problem really because it's a new device, so it shouldn't be any problems with 
any kind of security yet so we should be safe with that now cases is of course important so make sure you do put it in exactly as it's supposed to be now in terms of the incoming and the outgoing server this unless you've written this down a lot you've done a lot of business or anything you're probably not going to know what this is so you're actually going to need to go to your dot easy account for this now we've already set this up here we're actually just going to go to the main screen so as you can see here we've already got it set up to the one now this server number is actually going to change depending on what specific server your account is registered on with on now if you're not sure of this definitely contact us and we can easily help you d with this give you the information you need so i mean you can contact us by phone email live chat we all have it here you definitely contact us we'll help you out so for this one here you can do a little bit of dragging across the screen it does take a little bit of getting used to for the copy you will actually have to drag it across and then elongate it to whatever you want in terms of copying you actually have to use keyboard shortcuts which control c for those of you who are not familiar with it now all you need to do to get back to it is there's a couple different ways. You can either go back from the left, you can go back to the main menu, it's whatever you're really familiar with. I personally like to go back to the main menu just so I don't clutter the left hand side up too much with extra programs open. And then we can just easily copy this right in here. Now the port number you want to make sure is set to 993. This is because IMAP does require the incoming server to have SSL, which is basically for extra security. Now for this year, you do need to make sure that those are set up. If there's any different settings for those of you who are on our cloud services, you may have some different settings you've got set up. If you're not sure, you can contact us. We'll easily get that sorted out here for you. Now, because we like to keep things simple here at .easy, we keep it as the exact same thing for the incoming and the outgoing server. The only difference you're going to see between these two is the port numbers. So just remember, the incoming should be set to 993. The outgoing should be set to 465. For simplicity, you want to leave everything checkmarked as it shows because you are going to need all of those there. You want to make sure that SSL is again for both of them just to make sure everything's secure and good to go. It is imperative that you do leave outgoing server requires authentication, otherwise it's not going to be able to send properly. So once you've got those all in there, you want to click on where it says connect. It's going to say it's adding your account. It should just take a quick couple minutes. As you can see, it's already here. So as we can see, it's already got two emails that we were testing with and playing with earlier so you can see them here now what we're going to do is show you of course that it's working you can see it already received the mail now in order to send a message it took us a little while to kind of play around with this because it does look very different you want to click on this little plus symbol up here in the top now that's how you create a name now this is going to look a lot different to most of you now if you've got any different kinds of emails you need to type them in here it does have a nice little autocomplete feature so if we even start typing in this one again it's going to pop it up right away and you just select it from the list. You can select additional emails and everything else so you do have all the things. If you go into this it's going to go into people we haven't set it up yet but that's basically the way you're going to get your address book and other things in there so we're just actually going to cancel all that for now. You can CC to anyone you want you can go to show more and again get BCC you can change priority if you do want it more impressive here. Now this is definitely a little more different in my opinion which is where it says add subject. You literally have to go up there and click to replace it. So we're just going to call it test in this case because it is a test message. Now the other thing here is where it says add message, you need to click there to actually add in a message. And a sent from Windows Mail, that's just the default signature, same as anyone on an iPhone, Windows 7 phone, it's going to say where it's sent from. So this is a test. And that's all it is. So then once you're ready, you can either click on the X if you want to get rid of it or save it you can click on this little icon and that's how we're going to send it. So as you can see it went away there and it comes in automatically for you. And as we can see this is a test sent and received right here. So that's pretty much the way in terms of sending and receiving goes. Now on here on the left hand side you're going to see all your normal folders. So you've got your draft, junk, sent, everything. Now those of you who are using IMAP and have been using it for quite a while, the first time you set this up is going to take a little longer just because it's going to need to synchronize which means it's going to be downloading all of your messages, all of your folders from the server and it's going to set them up exactly the same as it looks here. So this is going to be much different. Now if you're going to be replying or forwarding you need to go to this icon here it will actually ask you whether you want to reply or reply all forward. So this email system predominantly seems to be based around the point and click and then if you go on the side here you can see your settings now this sidebar for the settings although it looks the same on pretty much every 
screen you're going to see. The settings itself are actually unique to whatever thing. So if we go into the settings here, you're going to see here's your actual mail account information. So if you need to change your settings at any point, you can just go into accounts here. You're going to see your account, or you can add another account. So if you're going to set up multiple accounts, this is the way you can do it. You can then click on your account, and bang, there's all your information there. Now, for this one here, there's a couple important ones, namely these couple here. So whenever you're downloading new messages, you can choose how it works. So you can also check on how long you want to have it, whether you want to have it basically all the time or whether you want to have it all every once in a while. Download new email whenever you want. You can set to manually hourly. Now, since you are on IMAP and you're going to be synchronizing it up, if you have a larger amount of email, you're probably going to want to give it a little bit of a delay. Otherwise, it's going to just keep snowballing. It's going to keep grabbing things before finishing, and it will eventually lock up and cause problems. So if you do have a large amount of email, you do want to give it a fair amount of time or set it to manual. So check whenever you want. So the content sync is naturally going to be email. This one here, you can kind of set any of these other ones. Here's where you would set up your signature. And then you can see the actual settings itself. Whoops, and I accidentally clicked off the screen. It's going to get back into there. So as you can see here, we go back to the settings. So if you ever need to change the actual settings again, here's where you can do it. But this is primarily where you're going to be controlling your account itself. And as you want, you can click Remove at the bottom, and bang, it's gone. But that, in a nutshell itself, is the email system, how you'd set up an IMAP account. For those of you who have accounts with us but not actually IMAP, we can help you set that up. Anyone who's on our cPanel services, we can easily help you migrate your account across. Just contact us and we'll easily help walk you through the steps of everything needed to be done for that. And we can get you set up on IMAP as well. For those of you who are still using some of our other email services like SmartMail or who are still on our Ensign panel, definitely contact us as well. We'll tell you what needs to be done so we can help you move your account over to our cPanel servers so that you can get IMAP as well. And we can help you cover everything needed there. If you have any other questions or anything, don't hesitate to give our support a call. That's what we're here for. We're more than happy to help you. If you have anything else, I mean, you can contact us whenever you need. You can leave more comments on our pages here through either Twitter accounts and everything. And if you guys need more videos, hey, contact us. We're more than happy to help show you the way around the surface and everything else we need to set up here. Mm -hmm.